and uh, yeah, so this is IPv4 addressing. This is IPv4 addressing. So again, good evening and welcome uh, to this class at Kenyatta University. And uh, we are going to talk about IPv4 addressing. And uh, the most interesting part of it will be the second part, which will be subnetting, which will be uh, subnetting. And so, so uh, let's get started. And so some of the things we're going to talk about, you can see the objective of this class is begins with the word to calculate, which means you're going to calculate IPv4 subnetting schemes to efficiently segment our networks. And so we look at the structure of an IPv4 address. We look at the types in terms of uh, unicast, multicast, and uh, broadcast. We we'll then look at types of these addresses in terms of public, private, and reserved addresses. And then we go to segmentation, which is actually subnetting. Yeah, and and that will be the climax. So the first thing we do that we need to do is let's talk about the structure of an IP version 4 address. This is not something new. This is something that we have uh, done with you guys uh, before, and it's not anything uh, new. Now, so the thing is, we have since talked about this, and we did say that an IP version 4 address is always having 32 bits, okay? Uh, and it is divided into four parts, uh, into octets, which means uh, we have a first octet here, second octet, third octet, and a fourth octet right there. We also talk about the IPv4 being divided into two portions. We have a network portion, and we have a host uh, portion. We have a network portion and we have a host portion. Now, we also talked about the subnet mask and uh, we today we will uh, talk a little bit about the subnet mask. And one of the things that the subnet mask does is that one, it can help us to differentiate between the network portion from the host portion. The network portion from the host portion. How does it do that? Our IP address is 192.168.10.10. Our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. All right. So we write the 192 into binary, which is this one. 168 into binary, it's here. 10 into binary, it's here. And another 10 into binary, it's here. You also write the 255. You remember 255 means all the bits in every octet are A, are ones. So eight ones, eight ones, eight ones, and the zero means eight zeros here. So to get the network portion from the host portion, very simple. Write the IP address in binary here. Write the subnet mask in binary here. Compare the bits, uh, the IP a binary and the subnet mask binary bit by bit. And your point of focus is look at where the ones for the subnet mask end. The ones are ending on the third octet. So when they end on the third octet, then you can draw a straight line cutting, cutting through the IP address, cutting through the IP address. And uh, once we do that, uh, then the left hand side is the network portion and the right hand side is the host portion. Okay. So it's that important. I mean, it's that simple. Okay. So, uh, once we do that, once we do that, uh, we can now be able to differentiate the network portion from there from the host portion, the network portion from the host portion. So network portion, host portion, take subnet mask, take IP address in binary, then where the ones are ending, remember the subnet mask, by the way. Subnet mask is always made up of continuous ones, and where the ones end, the zeros begin there. And you'll never find a one in between zero, and you'll never find a zero in between the ones. So subnet mask is made up of subsequent or continuous ones, and then continuous zeros. That is your subnet mask. All right. 
So where the ones end on a subnet mask, draw a line straight to cut the IP address, and the left hand side will be the uh, uh, network portion, and the right hand side will be the the host portion, the host portion. Now, we have different uh, types of subnet mask. Maybe the only one we might have seen is only one, which is uh, which is the one we have actually used is a uh, 255. The 255.255.0. I need to bring to your attention that we have so many subnet masks. And we're going to see some of them, not actually all of them today. We're going to see some of them here. Now, subnet masks, like I told you, are made up of continuous ones and continuous zeros. And subnet masks can be written in two ways. You can either write it in decimal form like this, 255.255.255.0. Or if you can change the subnet mask to binary of eight ones, eight ones and eight ones, and the remaining are zeros, you can just count the number of ones. And we write it as since eight times three is twenty-four, we write it at slash six twenty-four slash twenty-four. So this is called the prefix length or the you know prefix notation. So you either use the subnet mask in decimal form or in the slash notation or the prefix length. Most of your subnet mask will be given in slash notation or prefix length. So you need to know the equivalent of these ones into the subnet mask. And there's a pattern you can see here. Remember when we're doing addition of the multiples of two, we say the first number is 128, plus 64, 192, plus 32, 224, plus uh, 16, 240, plus 8, 248, plus 4, 252. And this is the last subnet mask we'll ever find. So all your subnet mask will either end with 0 or 128 or 192 or 224 or 240 or 248 or 252. All of them. Sometimes, uh, like this was 24 ones. You'll also find others that end at second octet, like 255 to 255. That means 8, here, yeah, 8 bits plus 8 ones. That is slash 16. Sometimes your subnet mask with the slash 8, which means only the first octet is having ones, and that is slash 8. So please know your subnet mask. When I say dot 128, you just know that that is eight ones, eight ones, and eight ones, and there's a one on the fourth octet, which makes it 25. Okay. 192 is two more ones on the fourth octet. 224 is three more ones. 240 is four more ones. 248 is five more ones, and 252 is six more ones. So any network admin, when they see 224 ending, without being told, I just know it is slash 27. When I see the 252, I always know it is slash 30, and I want you to mark those things off it. When you see slash uh, 29, I just know that is 248. When I see slash 28, I know that is 240. When I see slash 26, I know that is 192 at the end here. But remember, you can also have 255, the 255, the 228.0, which means that will be slash 17, numbers that are not here. So you can have slash 9, slash 10, slash 11, slash 12, slash 13, 14, 15. You can have slash 17, slash 18, slash 19, slash 20, slash 21, 22, 23, up to 24. So there are numbers that are missing here, and it depends on how many ones are actually there. So please know how to do your conversions from this side to the uh, decimal and from decimal back there. I hope that is clearer enough. Now, now, subnet mask can also be used to do one more thing. Apart from determining the network portion, the host portion, subnet mask can also be used if you're given an IP address like 192.168.10.10 and you're given a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, the subnet mask can also be used to know 
which network address that this IP address belong to? You know, network address is like the mother of the addresses. In which network does this IP belong? So you use something we call the ending process. Let me take to you a little bit about the ending process. We know that uh, mathematics has four major, four, like let me say the four uh, initial uh, operations, mathematic operations that we learned in primary school. We learned of addition, subtraction, a division, and multiplication, which is plus, minus, uh, division, and multiplication. But in, in mathematics, we have another operation, but this operation is funny. We call it the logical and operation, whereby in logical and operation, it uses, uh, it's a Boolean, Boolean operation, those who've done programming. And Boolean operation basically deals with true or false, whereby it only deals with um, binary numbers, where one is a true and zero is a false. So that if you have, if you take one and you add it with one, and by the way, the and the logical and works like multiplication. So that one added with one, you get a one. Zero added with one, you get a zero. It's like zero times one is zero. One added with zero is a zero, and zero added with a zero is a zero. So the only time you get a one is when you add one and a one, which means true and a true is true, but false and a true is false, true and a false is false, and false and a false is false. Okay, I hope that is clear enough. And so that process is actually used to determine the network address or the network address in which a particular certain IP belongs. So we still need to write our IP address in binary like this. We already did this, and that's why I'm not worried of this. Then you write your subnet mask also in binary. Okay. Once you do that, then now you start your ending process. You and bit by bit the first bit on this IP address and the first bit on the subnet mask. So one and one is a one. One ended with a one is a one. Wherever there's a zero, you obviously know what will happen because zero ended with anything, either zero or a one, will always give you zeros. And that's why we have all these zeros here. One ended with a one, obviously it's a one, yeah. Zero, of course, will give us a zero here. One ended with a one, it gives us a one. So wherever there's a one, of course, you get a one. Wherever there's a zero, you get a zero. You do that here, which means you'll only get exactly what is here. Because zero under the, down here on the summit mask, we have all ones. So one will only match where there's a one. You will get a one. But where there are zeros, you all, of course, just get the zeros. But look at the last octet of the subnet mask, we have all zeros. So expect where there's any zero, it will be a zero with anything that is up here. So you will still get a what? You still get all zeros here. Once you get this binary here, then now you need to change it to, 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 to decimal. So this is 192, 168, sorry, 128 plus 64, you get 192. This 128 plus 32, plus eight, you get 168. This is eight plus two, you actually get 10. Here is all zeros. Get So what am I talking about, guys? I need you to note one thing, whether you have forgotten or not, that I need you to start now adding these things in, in memory so that you need to know that the first number is represented by 128, the second one is 64, the third one is 32, next one is 16, eight, four, to one. So you need to know now this one's in memory. Okay? Know your numbers in memory, and that's why I gave you enough assignments. I gave you a binary game to play so that you could be up to task. Okay? So when you see this, you need to quickly remember that this is 128 plus 32. That is 160 plus 8 is 168. Very, very fast, you know, without having to rem remember that. So the number you get here, this will be a network address. 192.16.10.0 is the network address where this IP belongs to. So any address uh, within this category will always have 
the same network address, the same network address. All right, so that is a launching logical ending process. Now, I want to skip something because we're going to talk about it on network addresses, host addresses, and broadcast addresses. I want to skip this part because we are going to talk about it uh, ahead of us here. The only thing I can mention is here. We were able to know that since this router has only one interface, all of this is what? It's one network. And that means all these IP addresses on the same network. Someone needs to mute, please. Uh, please, please. Hey, 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 someone needs to mute. Okay, that's okay. All right. Now, this is what I'm up here. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. This gadget, all of them are on the same network. So devices on the same network, they must have a common network address. And you can see that network address is here, 192.16.10.0. Whereby, where there's a zero, it will be replaced by a number to give IP addresses to these devices. And in a few minutes, we learn that the network address is the only is one of the addresses that can never be assigned to any of these devices, this 10.0. But it is in this case. We'll also find another case where 10.0 can actually be assigned, but I don't want to confuse you right now. This is the network address. We cannot assign it to any of these devices. And by the way, not all network addresses begin with 10.0 or .0. We'll see some variations. So the router is always not a must, always assigned the first address, which is 10.1, you can see here. But it is not a must. You can assign it the last or any other, but for order, we always assign the router the first usable IP address. Then the others can be assigned, like this PC is assigned 10.10. .10. This P laptop is 10.255. This PC is 10.101. This PC is 10.12. Did you note something? Look at how the subnet mask is represented, slash 24. And this is one of the things I want you to not done. Most of them you will be given in slash notation. So you need to know slash 24 is 255 to 255 to 255 to 0. And you will get even the other variations of slashes there. So this is our devices on the same network. But so you can see the network portion is actually the same, the red part, but only the host portion, the blue part is actually different. But don't worry, we will talk about them soon enough soon enough. Mm. The, if I try to explain this, it will confuse you. I will bring it at this at the correct time. You know, let's talk up about these three types here of IP addresses. And we have talked about them before, actually. Unicast, broadcast, and multicast. So we did say that um, unicast addresses, this is an address that is used to communicate from one device to another, to one device, one-to-one -one communication. This PC wants to communicate to the printer only. So from this IP address, it goes to the IP address of the printer, which is as, uh, uh, 172.16.4.253. So one-to-one -one communication, the work of a unicast address. Okay. Broadcast address is used to communication from one device to all the devices in the network, all right? So one device with this PC, it goes to all the devices in the network, okay? All the devices in the network. We will talk about the broadcast address in every network, by the way, must have a broadcast address, and I'll show you how to identify. The default broadcast address, the default broadcast address is always 255 to 255 to 255 to 255, but not all broadcast addresses will be in this form. Not all of them, but most of them will end with the 255, but they might not have these other three 
octet having 255, but at least the last octet in most cases will be 255. So for multicast, again, this is an address that is used to communicate to some of the devices, not all of them. And the most multicast addresses, by the way, will start with 224. 224 multicast addresses. These ones are reserved addresses. They start with 224. So for multicast addresses, it is used to communicate from one single device to some of the devices in the network. Not this one, not this one, and not the printer. We're only communicating these two devices here. Okay. So multicast for one to a group of devices, not all of the devices. We look at other types of IP version 4 addresses. And we start by this, and this is important, ladies and gentlemen. We start by this particular uh, categorization, public and private, public and private. Now, public addresses, this is a type of address which can be globally routed between different service provider routers. I want you to get it. Public addresses, these are the addresses that we help us to connect to the internet, if I say so. Okay. And you know, internet means interconnection of networks, which means to communicate from one network to another network, you always need a public IP address. And it is the opposite of private, because private addresses are used to communicate for communication within the same network, within the same network or within the same LAN. How can you identify public IP addresses? How can you identify public IP addresses? To identify public IP addresses, you just need to know the privates. The privates are the fewer ones. So once you know the privates, it's like you can identify light from darkness <laughs> or darkness from light. If you can identify darkness from light, then that's how you should be able to identify public from the private. So the thing is, you just need to know the private ones. Then identify public will be easier. So these three groups are the three categories of the private IP addresses. Now I need you to listen and listen very carefully. Anytime you see an address that begins with 10.0.0.0, all the way 10.255 to 255 to 255. What does that mean? It means that the second, third, and the fourth octet can take any value from 0 to 255. We agreed there's no 256. All numbers end at 255. So from 10.0.0.0, .0 all the way to 10.255 to 255 to 255. And at this point, I think I need to explain something. Uh -huh. If I have a number here, let me say, I have a number nine here, then I want to add one. This is how we used to add in primary school. So 19 plus one, nine plus one, we actually get 10. But you realize we don't write 10. Normally we write a what? We write a zero here and we carry, we carry one. And one plus one plus this one, we get what? We get two. Okay? So which means when a number is nine, according to the principle of decimal numbers, nine is always the last number because decimal numbers begin from zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is the last number. If you reach, if you reach nine and you add one, you look at, you go back to, you start from the first one, which is Z, zero here. So I need you to mark that because that principle is very, very important. Nine is full, is the last number. The first number is zero. So if you add one to nine, you go to the first number again, which is zero, but you need to add one to the next one to give you two here. It is the same thing, oh. If you have 255, if you have 255 and you add here, you add one here, 
Okay? Five, 255 plus 1, you can never get 256. That does not exist because 255 is the last number, just like 9. In case you add 1 here, you have to go back to the first number, which is always 0, 0, and you carry 1, you add to the next one. So let's say this number here, where there's 0 here. Okay? Let's say we are having here uh, 2, 255, 255. So if you're having 255 where the zero is, and you add one here, you add one. So one plus 255, since 255 is already full, you will write zero there. You write zero where 255 was, and you carry one, you add one to zero, and you get here, and one. And this will be 0, and this will be 10. I'm teaching you something very important, something that is going to come in here. So we now have 10 dot 0 dot 1 dot 0, dot 0 here, OK? Which means this IP addresses, it starts to increase. If you have 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0, it starts to increase on the fourth octet. So the fourth octet will start from zero, go to one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 255. When it reaches 255, you add one to 255, it becomes full. You write a zero, you carry one to put to the next octet. Again, you start from zero, one, two, three. When this last octet is full again, 255, you add one to become two. You add one to become, if it's full, you add one to become three. You keep on adding one until it reaches 255. OK, when the third octet reaches 255, then you add one now to the next one to become one. And then it starts until the third octet will reach another 255. Then you add one here. So for you to reach that the third or second octet is 255, the third octet is 255. We need to fill. This. Um, the fourth octet must be full 255 times for it for, for for this one to be 255 and for this one to be two for the second octet to be 255 this one must be full 255 times okay it's just zero all the way one two three up to 255 then it fails the other one so you see how the increase happens the increase starts begins from the last octet for the fourth octet as it's filling the previous slowly by slowly so you realize how many addresses are here there are so many addresses there. So let me not lose track here. One of the ways to identify private addresses is any address that begins with 10. It doesn't matter what is on the second, third, and fourth octet. That is a private IP address. Then I get to the confusing one. Second way of identifying private addresses, any address that begins with 172 on the first octet. Then the second octet is funny. Any address that begins with 172 on the first octet, and then any, and then on the second octet, we need to have from 16 to 31. Okay, which means 172.16.0.0. So, which means the first octet must have 172. The second octet cannot be any number. The second octet can only contain 16, 17, 18, 19, all the way to 31, which means 17.32 is not a private address. 17.33 is not private address. 17.15 is not a private address. That is now public. And by the way, I forgot to tell you, anything out of these ones is now public. Anything out of these addresses is now public. So the Third and the fourth octet can take any number from 0 to 255. The first octet must be 172. The second octet can only take from 16 to 31. So this is the second group of private addresses. Then the last group of private addresses is any address that begins from 192, 168.0.0. And here also, just like the first one, the third and the fourth octet can take any number from 0 to 255. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, these private addresses, we can only use them within the private network, within our, our LAN. You cannot use it outside of your LAN, and you cannot use it. These ones are not even allowed in the internet. Listen to this. And yet, nowadays, almost every network uses a private address. Even my own network, I'm not afraid to show you. Look at my command prompt here. And I say IP config space forward slash oh. Look at my address. Huh? 192.168.0.108. Huh? And look at my default gateways and subnet must and in the server here. I mean, the, I'm using private addresses, but now someone can challenge me. How come I'm using a private address, yet I'm able to access the internet? That is a very pertinent question. Hmm? My laptop is using a private IP address, and yet, I'm able to access the internet. Now, this is because I was supposed to have a public IP address of my own. But we have been singing this song. The public IPs, they have all been depleted. We no longer have enough public IPs for each and every person or for each device. So what's happening? We are sharing these public IPs. Yeah? And I need to note this, that you see the same private I'm having here. It is the same private. There are so many people with the same private IP I'm having here. Even some of you might be having the same or the same range. These private IPs can be shared because they cannot be used beyond the LAN. You can't use it beyond your local area network. But in the public internet, we can only have one public IP, which is unique throughout the world. And that is why the other day I was showing you how to know my public IP. And I'm not afraid to show that as well. I just need to go to my PC, open a new tab, and type myipaddress.com. Type here myipaddress.com and press enter. Look at this. This is this is my public IP address here. I know there are hackers who might see my IP and they might want to do something with it. Okay. This is my own public IP address. And this IP, you can see it doesn't start with 192. Neither does it start with 172 or 192 or 10 dot something. It starts with 102 or 220 dot something. Okay. So come on, someone can ask me now if this is my IP address. What's happening? I mean, how come I have a private and public? Now, there exists another protocol called NAT. Network Address Translation. Now, everyone in my network, if they can check their, this site, if they can check this site, they will be able to find the same uh, public IP. Okay? They will be able to check the same, uh, to find the same public IP, but their private IPs will be different, which means all of us, we are sharing the same public IP, but we have different private IP. So my router, which connects me to the internet, to the, to the internet, to the whole world uh, network, is configured with the NAT, network address translation. And so it keeps on translating my private to this public and traffic coming back, it translates this public back to private. And it does that for all the
all the all the PCs in my network. Okay. All the PCs in my network. It keeps on translating that, and that's why we will be studying network address translation later on, and we'll actually see how is it that this happened. All right. Now, it is important for us to note that uh, this is a, a very important protocol, and it is the one. It is a temporary solution which has been helping us to um, to conserve the few private RPs that we have. It has been helping us to conserve the few uh, the few uh, public IPs that we have, so that 500 people with private IPs can just share the same public IP. 1,000 people, 2,000 people can same can share one public IP address. So please know how to differentiate the private ones from the public. I hope that is clear enough. So the private ones, they are unique and they are not allowed anywhere. They are not allowed anywhere within the internet. They are not allowed anywhere within the internet, those private IPs. So here's the NAT that I was talking about. So those will be our NAT routers and they can be able to translate the public to private and private back to public and private back to, to public. And that is something of course we'll learn about later on. We have some special types of IPv4 addresses. This one we have talked about it. The first one is called the loopback IP address. It ranges from 127 to 0.0.1 all the way to 127, the 255, the 255, the 254. But the most common one is 127 to 0.0.1 and this is normally used to to test if the host device or end device is properly configured with the TCP IP protocol. That means the IP addresses are well configured. So pinging this IP here is like the device is pinging itself because pinging this IP does not ping any other device in the world. And then we have another interesting special type of address called a link local IPv4 address. This word link local, we'll hear it even in IPv6. And uh, loop, loop, loop back address will also be heard in IPv6. Now, link local address is a special type of address. It's a special type of address which is automatically assigned by a PC or a laptop or a host device to itself. A device assigns itself if it cannot locate a DHCP server in the network. The device is meant to automatically acquire an IP address, but it hasn't found a DHCP server in the network. So what happens? If it can't, can't find a DHCP server, it assigns itself an address. Now the address it assigns itself is actually a private a type of a private address, which it cannot use to connect to the internet. So this is one point of troubleshooting. Every time your computer wakes up, you try to browse the internet, it cannot. Please check for that. Check, go to the CMD and do IP config space forward slash all. Check if the address is beginning with 169 to 254. When you see this 169 to 254, just know that is an IP. It's always called a PIPA, automatic private IP addressing, a PIPA automatic private IP addressing, and that is one of the reasons for you to note that your PC cannot locate the DHCP server in the network. Let's talk about classes of IP addressing. Classes of IP addressing. We do have five classes. The most important ones are the first three. Class A, class B, Class C. Now, at this point in time, we know that class A begins from zero on the first octet, zero up to 127. Class B begins with 128 to 191. Class C begins with 192 to 223. Class D and E, D is from 224 to 239. 
and then 240 to 255 on the last octet. Now this uh, three, two here, we're not going to measure so much on them. And these ones are partly used by the military. I am not allowed to say that, but I'm allowed to tell you the truth. OK, so these are partly used uh, for special purposes by government and they are not assigned to any device in the public domain. Now we're going to focus on the first three classes. These first three classes. One thing I need you to do for me, please. This is for me. I just need you to know the slashes because it's going to be handy. Yeah, I'm going to ask you these ones. Class A has slash eight, which is 255.0.0.0. Class B has slash 16, 255.255.0.0. Class C has slash 24, which is 255.255.255.0. So class A, only the first octet has once. Class B, the first and the second octet. Class C, the first, second, and third octet has once. So 8, 16, 24. Please refuse to forget that. Refuse to forget that. Now, this actually includes the public IP address. And that is why, depending on the size of an organization, an organization that is starting, depending on how many people they have or how many computers they have, they will purchase one of those three classes. So let me start with the class C. Class C, this is a small organization which has between one user to 254 users. They will go to class C because class C only has 254 IP addresses to assign out. So any company, company having one to 254 employees will go for class C. And class C occupies only 12%, 12.5% 12 of the total number of, of the 4.3 billion addresses that you have for IPv4. Class B, now between 255, any company with 255 up to 65,534, that company should not go for class C. That company should now go for class B. And class B is composed of um, 25% of the addresses, and that's why it has about 65,535 addresses. That is class B. Now, any company with over 65,534, like 65,535, all the way to 16,000, 16,777,214. 16, any company with over 16 million will now go for class A which comprises of fifty percent of the tot of the four point three billion addresses, okay? Class D and E, like I told you, these ones are not always assigned. These ones are preserved for special purposes. They are preserved for special purposes. All right. Now In terms of IP address assignment, I had mentioned to you that IP addresses are always assigned by this authority called the INA or IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. They manage the and allocate the blocks of IP version 4 and 6 addresses. And to whom they, do they assign them? They assign them to our five regional internet registries, RIRs, which are found all over the world. Okay. North America, the regional internet register is called ERIN. Uh, South America is LACNIC. Europe, RIPE. Asian countries is APNIC. And then the motherland Africa is AFRINIC. AFRINIC is our regional internet registry. So IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, for example, will assign to Africa, and then all the service providers in Africa will have to get from AFRINIC those addresses. So it is IPv4 addresses, version 6, uh, port numbers, uh, even domain names and all that. Okay? So that is that. That is, those are our RIRs.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this point now, I have been doing research for the years I've been teaching CCNA and being a mathematician, I've realized that this is the chapter that has some elements of math, and this is the chapter that most students do not get. So I went, did research, and came up with my own notes. And from here, most of the notes here are actually handwritten. Okay, <laughs> and you're gonna bear with me. They are handwritten, but I put them on the on the slides, and I will need you guys to uh, to bear with me because I patent this particular. Uh, no, so from here, moving forward, we are going to, you know, work on this. So, few things to note here is the need for version four and six, and the, uh, the version six, and the issues we have with version four. So, obviously, IPv6 is the successor of version four. And this is because version four addresses uh, have been depleted, and this is a very great motivating factor for IPv6. And the latest projection shows that all the five regional internet registries, they ran out of the version four addresses between 2015 and 2020 here, which is a year that has passed. And so with the increase in the internet population, the number of version four addresses which have been depleted, this is we have with the network address translation, and the new lady in town, the Internet of Things. Surely this has never been a better time to move to version six than now. Version four were theoretically about 4.3 billion addresses. And, you know, including the private addresses, which I used in collaboration with the NAT. IPv6 of 128 bits were over 340 and decillion addresses, 340 36 zeros. So IPv6 has become a fixer on most of the limitations we have in version 4, and that's why it's a good deal. Of course, we did talk about IPv6, IPv6 addresses. We talked about hexadecimal numbers here, very important, and how to do the translations and all that. We did binary to hexadecimal conversions. And now, of course, we have talked about the subnet mask and uh, host portion, network portion, the types of subnet masks here, how they, you know, actually end and end, uh, end there. And now I I'm skipping this because this is stuff we have repeated. And so, beginning at this point, uh, of course, I'll need you to put your pen and paper very close now. Now. The reason why we subnet networks to meet our network requirements is one, I'll give you an example of uh, our universities. Our universities have different departments. We have the engineering department, for example, the human resource HR department. We have uh, uh, if universities that do production, they have a sales department. We have executive management or senate department or the vice chancellor's department. We have the IT department for technical support. Each of these departments will normally have a certain number of users or, or you know, employees. And so, of course, the university will have the finance department. It will have, you know, the examination department, and it has been found that in some universities, students have become very sophisticated and they are able to do hacking. And that is not far from the truth. And there are students who have been able to hack into, student, into the examination department and they were able to uh, assign themselves some marks in some units and they got A's in everything. And there are students who have been able to graduate with the false marks and they are just hacked into the exam database and assigned themselves marks and they graduated. Now, there are students who have been able to, through the help of others, uh, the IT practitioners from outside, these students have been able to hack into the finance department and 
without paying any school fees, they were able to clear themselves by assigning them some amount of money to clear the fees. And once the fees was uh, paid, once the fees were, were, were paid, then they were able to clear the fees. So the university, did, the university doesn't have any money in the bank, but they, all students have actually cleared school fees. And that is something that is interesting. Now, through networking, we've been able to provide some of these solutions by making sure we can put every department in every in their own network by doing what is called subnetting. So subnet, sub is subdivide or subdivision, net is network. So we can subdivide the network into small subsections. And each and every subdivision of the main network, we call it a subnet. It's actually a subdivision of a network. Just like if you have bread and you divide bread into small pieces or slices, the slices don't stop to become bread. So they are actually slices, but of the main bread. So they are subdivisions of the main bread. Now, so this allows you know, us to accommodate you know, a certain number of devices within each and every network. And so we can separate one department from another department using this particular strategy. And later on, we will talk about something called VLANs, which will, of course, help us to do that uh, more. So it helps us to do planning of our networks, and it will, of course, help us to uh, uh, to have some uniformity, and it has some security element with it. You can actually choose to assign different devices according to networks. So, for example, all the servers, put them in the same network and give them these ranges of addresses. All the printers, all the routers on and so forth. Now, this is where we start, ladies and gentlemen. In this particular topic, it's called networking math. We are only going to use two formulas, only two, and they are not complex formulas. And from here, I want you to note down the following. We are only going to calculate two things. You either going to calculate the number of subnets, <laughs> which means we said a subnet is just a network, a network of a network, or a network gotten from another network after subdivision. So you're either going to calculate the number of networks, which are calling subnets, or we are going to calculate the number of host addresses or IP addresses in a network. Either you calculate the number of networks or the number of IP addresses in the same network. So I told you today that every network must have a network address. And so it's important to note that the network I'm talking about here is actually the same network address that we did talk about some time back. And so I repeat, we'll either calculate the number of networks or we call them subnets, or we will calculate the number of host addresses in every network. Now, again, I need to note at this point, to get the number of networks, we are just going to play with bits. Which bits? Bits of zeros and ones. And so, to get the number of networks, we are going to borrow. So, note that word borrow. To get the number of networks or subnets, we are going to borrow bits. And to get the number of hosts, we are going to reserve bits. So networks or subnets, you borrow, host, you reserve. Please, please, please underline those two words because we have only three steps. We don't have 15 steps. I have reduced these steps from 15. So if you try to follow the steps inside your account, inside the notes, you'll find 15 steps. 
12 to 15 actually. But if you follow my method, it only has three steps. And this is a, a process I have researched and I keep on improving it daily. Every time and then, I keep on improving this method. So to calculate the number of subnets, we have said we borrow. To calculate the number of host addresses, we reserve bits. So that is the first point to note. Now, what is the first formula? The first formula is the formula for calculating the number of hosts. To calculate the number of host or host addresses, or usable host addresses, we use the formula 2 power n minus 2. 2 power n minus 2. 2 power n minus 2. This is the first formula. And the second one is not very far from this one. Now, since we are calculating the number of hosts, we want to define each of these two terms. So 2 power n, n is the number of bits remaining after reserving. After you reserve, the number of bits remaining after reserving is the n there. n is the number of bits remaining after reserving. Then we minus 2. Why do we minus 2? Because for every network, for you to find the number of usable hosts, usable means addresses that can be assigned to an end device or a router, can be assigned to anything. You must always subtract two addresses. These two addresses that you are reserving, one is called the broadcast address. I will show you how and which one. The broadcast address can never be assigned to any address. The second one that we minus is the network address, which I call the network ID. The network address and the broadcast address can never be assigned to any device. So to find usable addresses, you must find the total number of addresses, then you minus two. So to find the total number of addresses, you look at the bits remaining after you reserve. So 2 power n minus 2. Don't be a secretary in my class. It's better to write what you are hearing, <laughs> not what you see, because what you see here might confuse you. So 2 power n minus 2. But these notes, you not, you will not find them anywhere. You only see them. Now that I'll put this video on YouTube, that's where you're going to find it. But this PowerPoint, this note, you won't find them anywhere. So 2 power n minus 2 formula for finding the number of usable host addresses. That is the first. The second and the last formula, the second and the last formula is for calculating the number of subnets or networks. And the formula is 2 power n. Where 2 power n, n is the number of n is the number of bits remaining the bits borrowed yeah n is the number of bits borrowed n is the number of bits borrowed for the host i think i added the number of bits remaining after reserving after it's actually the number of bits reserved please correct that in the previous formula N is the number of bits reserved. N is the number of bits reserved. And the number of bits reserved here, not, not bits remaining after reserving. The number of bits reserved to get the number of usable host. The number of bits reserved. Number of bits reserved. 2 power N, N is the number of bits borrowed. Since in calculating subnets, we borrow. Calculating host, we reserve. Those are our two formulas that we are going to use. Ladies and gentlemen, from here now, we are just going to have, we generate, we get a question, we solve it. 
We get, we solve up to the end, up to the end. No more theory now. So, this method is called, I named it, subnetting made easier than ever before in just three steps. Subnetting made easier than ever before in just three steps. Now, what I need you to do right now, as we speak, I need you to write the three steps down. I need you to write the three steps down. I need you to write the three steps down. And um, I need you to, I, because I told you I've been updating this method, I want you to avoid this here. Avoid this one. Please write this one. The step one is how many bits it took to get the number of networks, stroke hosts. Write that down, step one, and you keep, you keep some space. Leave some space, three or four lines but below it. Three or four lines below it. How many bits it took to get the number of networks, stroke hosts? How many bits it took to get the number of networks, stroke host? So the networks or host you will always be provided with. Now, our objective here is to find hosts. Our objective for this uh, step one is to find the hosts. That is the answer we need to get for step one. So write that down, skip some space, then write the second step. And the second step is reserve, and you make some adjustment here, reserve stroke borrow. Reserve stroke borrow bits. Why am I adding this borrow here? Because depending on whether they are networks, you will borrow. And when they are hosts, you reserve. So reserve stroke borrow bits. Reserve stroke borrow bits on the subnet mask and find your increment. So for the second step, you are going to do only one of them, not all of them. So you'll either borrow or reserve bits. And you reserve it where? On the subnet mask. And then the second part of it is you need to find one thing, increment, which is also called magic number. Some people call it magic number. OK, so reserve stock borrow bits on the subnet mask and find your increment or magic number magic number all right reserve stroke borrow bits on the subnet mask and find your increment okay skip some space skip some uh, four or five lines or some space there and then the last step of my three steps. Use the increment to find what? Network ranges. Use the increment to find network ranges. Please write that. Write that. So the next slides are going to have the Step one is going to have the wrong one. Please ignore where, what I have deleted. When we are in step one, we need to use the first one. How many bits? So step one, we get bits. Step two, we borrow or we reserve, depending on whether they are networks or hosts. Then we find the increment. Step three, we now use that increment to find the network ranges. I'm assuming you have already written those three steps because we want to start now the official submitting steps. Or process and we do it in the three steps you have 
written down. The three steps you guys have written down. All right, so let's get started here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Let me pick my pointer here. All right. Now, so I now take you through the first question here. This is the first question. This is the first question. And uh, on this first question, um, I need you to, we have to note how many networks we have here. We have three routers. There's a LAN on this router. There's another LAN on this router. And there's a LAN on this router. Those are three networks. Then there's a link between these two routers. That is four, the fourth network. And then the fifth network is here. These are one, these are one. This is a LAN, a LAN, and a LAN. So we have three networks, oh, sorry, five networks here. Five networks. What is the equation? The equation is right here. This organization having this network topology has purchased class C address. And so please write this address down. It has purchased a class C address. So write the address 216.21.5. Dot zero two sixteen to twenty one dot five dot zero. That is the network address they have purchased from the ISP. Remember, every organization gets you must get your address from the ISP. You realize it is a public IP. So this organization has purchased as class C address. <laughs> Guys, we talked about the three classes of IP: class A, class B, class C. So when you are told class C, what you need to know is that. I require you to know the subnet mask already because we need it. So class C subnet mask was what? 255, the 255, the 25 class slash 24. So that was the subnet mask. And they would like to use it to address their network. All right. Of course, we are being told that every interface of a router defines a network of itself. That one I've told you before. So let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens. I have very bad handwritings here. Please don't mind about that. So the first thing we do is what I am going to tell you now. At this point, I need you guys to do the following. I need you guys to, let me just take you back a little bit. I'll come back here. I want you guys to write uh, the multiples of two, if you can remember them. Right here. I want you to write the multiples of two. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one twenty-eight. That is the only thing. Don't draw the table. On that space below the first step, write one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and one twenty-eight. Obviously, we know that two power zero is one, two power one is two, two power two is four. 2 power 3 is 8, 2 power 4 is 16, 2 power 5 is 32, 2 power 6 is 64, and 2 power 7 is 128. I remember last time we met, I told you to move until 2 power 20. <laughs> and we are going to need that knowledge here. All right. So we do have these numbers here. We have already counted that five networks. So we need to find the number of bits. Finding bits has never been easy than now. So to get the number of bits, you just need to do one simple thing. Look at this. Since we have five networks, and by the fact that we have networks, guys, it means that we are going to do what? We are going to borrow. Because in networks, we borrow. In host, we reserve. So bring the number you are given is five. Find your, ask yourself. between. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 28. Where does 5 lie? Obviously, you know that after 4, we always go to 5. So 5 is between 4 and 8 here. This is where we have 5, number 5. Since we have number 5 coming between 4 and 8, of course, between 4 and 8, we have 5, 6, 7, and then we go to 8. So since 5 is between 4 and 8, we know that 4 is already less than 5. So we cannot use 4. 
So we are going to use the next number after eight, after five is actually eight. So five falls between four and eight. We cannot use four because it is less. We use one that is more than five, which is eight, because either way, you can only use these numbers that are here. That's why we are learning the multiples of two. You cannot use anything that is not here. So since four is less, we take eight, all right? So since we take eight, we ask ourselves, eight is two to power what? Eight is two to power three. Now that three is what we are looking for. So three is the number of bits. <laughs> three is the number of bits that we are looking for for step one. Yeah? The power there is the number of bits. If in case you have understood, I need to test it. And so I'm going to give you a number. I'll give you 50, guys. 50, I'll give you a second example. We know that if I give you, I want you to create 50 networks, okay? Or even if there are 50 hosts. I'm going to bring, ask myself, where does 50 lie? 50 lies between 32 and 64. 32 is less than 50, so we take 64. And 64 is 2 to power 6. So 6 is our answer. Now, in case you have understood that, can I know if I give you number 100, I want to create 100 networks. How many bits are those are going to be needed to create those one networks? 100, guys. You can just look and see and you tell me. You can unmute. Seven. Very good. Very good. We need seven bits. We need seven bits to create seven, I mean, to create 100 networks. Uh, uh, let me give you the last one. The last one. This is a temptation I'm giving you guys. Uh -huh. I want to create. I want to create. Uh, 130 networks. How many bits? I want to create 130 networks. 130 networks, someone? The silence here. <laughs> 130 networks, how many bits? Someone to help us there. It is eight bits. It's eight bits, very, very good. I want to assume, um, I mean, he's gotten it very well. So what is going to happen is simple. These numbers are not constant. I had told you to keep on moving from 2 past 7. And one thing you need to note is that these numbers are actually doubling. To get 1, to get 2, you double 1. To get 4, you double 2. To get 8, you double 4. To get 16, you double 8. To get 32, you double 16. Therefore, to get 128, you double 64. To get the next number, which will be 2 power 8, you actually double 128 and you get 256. To get the next number, you double 256, you get 512. To get the next one, you double 512, get 1024. So keep on moving. If I give you a number that is bigger than what is here, keep on doubling these numbers until you get closer to the number you want. That is very good, guys. And that's how I knew you are the best students for this class. So we have known how to get bits. Now let's move on. Now, we now know that we need three bits for five networks. Five, you check it under eight, and eight is two to power three, so we need two bits. Leave alone this. This method, I got it the very first time, but it was very complex for my students, and so that's why I came up with that other first method. Now, now that we have gotten three bits, we move to the second step. And in the second step, since we are dealing with the networks, and there were five networks we did count, it means we are now going to borrow. <laughs> we are going to borrow. So that's why I had said reserve stock borrow. So for networks, you borrow. For hosts, because there come a time when we are going to ask you to find hosts also. Now, the next thing you need to do right now, guys, is that we noted that we are talking about class C. Class C is slash 60 slash 24. It is 255, 255, the 250. So what I need you to do is that write this subnet mask in binary on the space you left below step two. So I want to see 
eight ones, eight ones, eight ones, and eight zeros. All right. I want to see eight ones, eight ones, and eight zeros. That is our slash 24. Once you write um, the slash 24 into binary, right? So we are now going to borrow the bits because we are dealing with the networks. And which bits? The bits we found in step one, which were three. Now, at this point, you need to note that everything we do, I had already talked to you about network portion and host portion. Normally, network portion is made of ones, and the host portion is always made of zeros. So everything we do is going to be affecting the host portion, where there are zeros. And so to borrow bits, and to borrow specifically, to be precise, three bits, on the host portion, which is on the fourth octet, which has all zeros, we are going to borrow three zero bits, which is in the host portion, and we convert them to one bit, which is the network portion, okay? Which means we are going to extend the network portion. So borrow three bits, and you borrow from left of the host portion to right. Why am I insisting? Because when we'll be reserving now, we'll reserve from right to left. So from borrowing, you borrow from left. So from left to right, so you just need to count one, two, three. So the first three zeros from left, you convert them to ones, and there are three ones. And the remaining five zeros, they remain zeros like that. So borrowing is from left of the host portion to right. So one, two, three, convert them to ones, and the rest, let them be zeros. Now you realize we have extended the network portion, and by doing so, our network subnet mask has actually changed. Previously, we were having 255.255.255.0. Now we have 255.255.255, and we are having three one. We have added three more bits here. Remember, the first one represents 128, the second one represents 64, the third one represents 32. So 128 plus 64. 192, 192 plus 32 is 224. So the new subnet mask is 255.255.255.224. Or this is going to be slash 24 plus 3 is slash 27. So our subnet mask are now going to be slash 27, slash 27, or 224 at the end. So we have already borrowed bits in the subnet mask. Now we need to find, the next thing is to find the increment. How do we find the increment? Very simple. After you have borrowed or reserved for that matter, you look at the last one, eh? the last one bit here, what number that is represent. We know that the first one, always from left, represent 128. The next one represents 64. And the last one, one here, one bit represents 32. So that 32 here, this is our increment or magic number. This is our increment or magic number. You can just draw a small arrow and you circle it or put it in a box, write 32. That is our increment. And you ask yourself, on which octet is it in? It is in the fourth octet. It is in the fourth octet. Okay. So. I hope that is clear enough how to borrow and how to find the increment. Increment will always be the last one bit on the new subnet mask. Remember, we did not touch the first, second, and third octet. Then we go to the last step. On the last step, we now need to use the increment, which is 32, to find our network ranges. Very, very important. Very important. Now. I think at this point, I might be tempted to uh, bring up some notepad here so that I can make it a bit orderly. And let me increase the font here to maybe 24. Oh, that is big. Ah, oh, that's okay. So, can you see my notepad, guys? I need to make sure.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, so at this point, you bring your network address, which was 216.21.5.0. Come and write it here. You'll actually write it on the last on the last step. OK. So. You take 32, which was your increment. Your increment was 32. So if the increment was 32. And it is on the fourth octet. So we are going to add that increment on the fourth octet. And you know, the fourth octet, your address, your address is 216.21.5.0. So zero is the fourth, the, the fourth octet. So I'll have 216.21.5.0. So I, I add 32 and it becomes 32. So zero plus 32, of course, will be 32. And I'm going to continue adding. 32 plus 32, we get 64, all right? And I continue adding, 64 plus 32 is 96. And I continue adding, uh, 96 plus 32 should be um, 128. And we can leave it there for the moment. Now, after adding, we, we, we say use increment to find Use increment to find the network ranges. You know, a range is, a, is something that begins from something and ends at something. Now, these ones are not network ranges. So to find the ranges, we are going to do something very interesting. Guys, I'm trying to keep this as simple as I can. So to find the network ranges, this is what I'm going to do. Look at the first network range. Oh, sorry, the first network, the network is 216.21.5.0. It begins at 5.0. Now the second one begins at 5.32. Look at that. If the second one begins at 5.32, yet the first one began at zero, it means for the second one to begin at 5.32, it means the previous one ended at 5.31. Look at that. OK. Again. Again. Let me just put them in the same line. Uh, the third one, the third one begins at 64. It means the previous one ended at 63. Okay. Now, the fourth one, it's beginning at 96. It means the previous one ended at 95. OK. And then uh, the fifth one is beginning at 128. It means the previous one ended at 127. OK. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We need to get the range for the last one. And we do that by adding. 128 plus 32, that should be 160. We increment it with the increment. And that therefore means that this one will end at 159. Now all of them will have all of them will have the same subnet mask slash 27. OK. Slash 27. And you do the same thing here. So 27, 27, slash 27, slash 27. Now, here, there's a lot to learn here, guys. There's a lot of information to learn here, which means all of them have the same subnet mask, which is actually 255 to 255 to 255 to 224. That is the slash 27. Now, at this point in time, this is now a range. This range begins at 216.21.5.0, all the way to 5.31, which therefore means this. Uh -huh. Which means one thing, that this range here, this is range for the first network. 
It begins from 5.0 up to 5.31. Let me take you back a bit. We said for every network, there must be two addresses that are not usable. That's why we are using the command 2 power n minus 2. So the two we were subtracting are these ones. 216.215.0. This one is called the network address. You can never assign this address to any device in the network. It has a special purpose, and that's why you can never assign it. Now, 216.21.5.31 is called the broadcast address. It's called the broadcast address. Okay, so network address, and they have um, broadcast address. These two addresses, 5.31 broadcast address and 5.0 is network address. Those two addresses have special purposes. You can never assign them to any of the devices. What does that mean? So which addresses now can be assigned to our devices? which means 5.0 and 5.31 are unusable. So the first usable address will be, the first usable address here will be 5.1, okay? 5.1 will be the first usable, and the last usable here will be 5.1. 5.30. Those are the only addresses, which is from number one to number 30. So 216, 25, 1, 216, 20, 21, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 29, 20, 30. So 5.1 up to 5.30. How many addresses are that? From number one to 30, that is 30 addresses. So out of the total 32, which is 32 means um, including the 31 and 0 here, are actually 32, but we must subtract two of them to give us the total number of usable addresses, which is 30 from 5.1 to 5.30. So 5.1 is the first usable, 5.2 is the third usable, 5.43 is the third usable, all the way. 5.30 is the third usable, which is also the last usable address. Please note those terms. First usable, second usable, last usable, second last usable, which is dot 29. So that is the first range. You know, I'm going to ask you questions here. So that's why I want you to be keen. I'm going to ask you the same questions, but for the second range. Remember, these ones are different networks. You will take the first networks. The first network, you'll actually assign it to another network. The second one you assign it to a different LAN, the third one to a different LAN, so on and so forth. So my question for you is here, second range. Someone you're allowed to answer. What is the network address in the second range? What is the network address in the second range? 32. Very good, very, very good. What is the broadcast address in the second range? Someone? Broadcast address? 63, very good. What is the first usable address in the second range? First usable, guys? Please don't 30, fear. 33. 33, very good. 33, very good. Second usable? I want everyone to talk, guys. Everyone to talk. Don't fear anything. We are in a learning situation. This is a learning class, and you're allowed to make mistakes. So don't fear to make mistakes. What is the second usable address in that range? Second usable? 34. Very good. What is, what is the last usable? Last usable address? <clears throat> 62 very very good very very good let me take you to the fifth range here fifth range what is the last usable address
158. Very good. What is the second usable address? Second one usable. One? One. Thirty. Very good. A network address? And twenty-eight broadcast one fifty-nine. Very, very good. So, guys, it's very important you know how to mark these addresses because you're going to have you're going to get at the workplace and you're told submit this network, submit this network, and provide a network for each and every department and assign them. What are you gonna do? So, this is the point when you need to get to know how to calculate your addresses without any conflict, using just the three steps. And once you know those three steps, they are going to be very obvious, very, very obvious. So this is the first assignment. And now from here, just assign your addresses and the subnet masks are all the same there. Now, from here, uh, actually you can see, we can take the first address we assign to the first network, the third one we give to the next network, next to this network, to this network, until all of them have the same, address without conflicting, without repeating. Now, this is the point I need to tell you something, something very, very important. Now, this connection, this network here, this network is called a point-to-point -point network. It's actually an example of a wide area network. This kind of network requires, since it is point-to-point, it requires only two addresses. Only two addresses, which means one address for this router interface, another one for this router interface. Normally, there's no devices inside the wide area network. Inside the point to point, there's no device. So every point to point only needs two addresses, which means, therefore, if there are 30, if there are 30, you leave 28 free. 28 will be free. I realize I didn't tell you something. I must give you everything that I know. Let me mention one thing. I need you to note that each of these ranges, by the way, they have equal number of addresses. How do you know that? It's, it was easy to know. It was easy to know from uh, 5.1 to 5.30 or even from 0 to 31. Now, when I give you from 64 eh, to 95, whereby the first usable will be 65 and the last usable will be 94. So from 65 to 94, how do we know how many addresses are those? Very simple, guys. Anytime you're given to, you're told to find the number of items within a range of uh, numbers, very simple. Just get the difference between those two numbers and then add one. So take 94 minus 63. Nine, sorry, 94 minus 65. What is 94 minus 65? Someone? 29. Plus 1? 30. 30. 30. That's how you get numbers anywhere. That is in any part of life. Every time you need to get a range, or the numbers between any two big numbers, just get the difference and add 1. You will always get how many numbers are in between there. So each of these ranges actually have 30. And that means there's going to be a problem. You know why there's going to be a problem? Because the number of people here might not be equal to the number of people here, or PCs might not be equal to the number of users here. And it's even worse in a point to point. Because in a point to point, whether you give them 500 addresses or given 30, they only need two. The rest are wastage. Because you can't take addresses in one network and assign them in another network. You can't. That is forbidden. Now, we have another question. I told you we are just going to get a question, work on it. This time around, this organization has class purchase class C address. It actually happens to be the same address, 216.21.5.0. And they would like to use it to create networks of 30 hosts each. This time they need hosts. They don't need networks. No, they need 30 hosts each. So I'm going to ask you questions. 
and I'm going to require you to answer. I'm going to require you to answer the questions as we move on. OK, so. Since we are given 30 hosts. I need you to give me the first. Answer here. If you have 30, how many bits are those? 30 hosts. How many bits, guys? Check the bits. How many bits for step one? Look your step. Don't look my step one. I already told you we are not going to use this one here. There's a new one that you know that we use. So how many bits? Thirty. Is it six? Is it six? Thirty is between thirty-two and sixteen, so we can't take. 16, so we take that, that oh. two. So it should be what? Should be which number? Guys, six. 30. Is that correct? You know, 30 is between five. 16. It should be five, yes, because 30 is between 16 and 32. 30 is between 16 and 32. 16 is less. So we take 32, which is 2 to the power 5. So for 30 bits, we need 5. I mean, for 30 hosts, we need 5 bits. For 30 hosts, we need 5 bits. Once we get our 5 bits, since we are talking about hosts, friends, since we are talking about hosts, it means we're going to do what? We are going to reserve. We are going to do what? To reserve the addresses. And since we are going to reserve, let us see how reserving is done. So to reserve the bits, again, it is class C. The subnet mask is the same. So write your subnet mask into binary. Eight bits, eight bits, eight bits, and eight, of course, eight zeros here. Then in reserving, you know, when you have visitors, at home and you have family members so you tell family members that we're going to have visitors today five visitors okay so we need you to reserve five chairs when we are told to reserve five chairs it means those chairs should not be sat on by any of the family members they are going to be left unoccupied all right and that's exactly what we are going to see we are going to reserve five zero bits still on the host portion only that this time around we start from right going to left so we reserve with first counting one two three four five six we're going to reserve those zeros which means those zeros should remain zeros we should not touch them they should be reserved to be zeros so one two three four five zeros everything else must be changed to ones now you get that Change everything, all the zeros remaining after the ones that are reserved, all the others make them ones. All the others make them ones. We will find almost the same result, but it is by coincidence. It's not by design. OK. So when you reserve five bits and the rest become ones, we'll still have eight ones, eight ones, eight ones, and three ones here. And the rest, of course, are zeros that we reserved. OK. So the last October. One bit here, which is our increment on the fourth octet, will still be 30, 32. The subnet mask will remain the same, the 224. And so you will do the incrementing again. And the incrementing, take your address, which is 216.21. We are going to write it down here. And when we write it, it will be the same thing. 5.0, we're going to increment using 32, which is uh, uh, on the fourth octet. So 0 plus 32, 32. 32 plus 32, 64. 64 plus 32, 96. Plus 32, 128. Plus 32, 160. Then, of course, we are going to find the ranges. Uh, if the first, second network is beginning at 32, the previous one ended at 31. Okay. The third one is beginning at 30, 64. This one ended at 63. 
96 for the fourth one. This one ended on 95. 128, this one ended at 127. 160, this one ended at 159. Okay? So everything else remains the same, and all of them will be slash 27. Slash 27. That has, we did it differently, but we got the same answer. Now, let's look at something different. We have been talking about class C. Class C. We now want to look at class B. And you know the subnet mass for class B? The slash 16, which is 255.255.0.0. Anyway, so we're going to write our subnet mask, I mean, class IP address that we are given is here 150.5.0.0. That's our network address. And what do they need? They need us to create 100 networks. They need us to create 100 networks. And so my question will be, how many bits are 100 networks? To create 100 networks, how many bits, guys? How many bits to create 100 networks? I'm hoping you already wrote the multiples of two. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. How many bits? 100. Seven. Seven. Very good. Very good. Seven bits. Seven bits. I told you are the multiples of two. 100 falls between 128 and 64. 100 falls between 128 and 64. And so, since 100 falls between 128 and 64, 64 is less. So we take 128, which is 2 to power what? 2 power. 2 to power 6, sorry, 2 to power 7. And that's why we have how many bits here? We have 7 bits. All right. Second step, take subnet mask. This is class B. So subnet mask will be slash 16 here, which is 255.255. So 8 ones, 8 ones, and 8 zeros on the third and fourth octets are all 8 Z, 8 zeros. Since we are dealing with the networks, so we are going to borrow bits here. To borrow is from left to right. So we're going to borrow zeros and convert them to ones. That's how we know when to borrow. So to borrow, we borrow zeros and we convert them to one. So which means we borrow from the host portion, we add to the side of the network portion. And we're going to borrow seven bits. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of the eight bits on the third octet, we've only borrowed seven of them. And the last zero is actually here. And the fourth octet has all the zeros available here. All right. So what happens is that from slash 16, we have added six more, seven more bits on 16. And you get what? We get 23. And that's why our new subnet mask is going to be slash 23, which will be 255 to 255 dot what here? 128. Plus 64 is 192. Plus 32 is 224. 252. Plus 16 is 240. Plus 8 is 248. Plus 4 is 252. Plus 2 is 254. Very good. So we'll have 254 on the third octet. And then the last octet will be all zeros there. Look at where the last one bit is. It's on the third octet. And it actually represents 2. So the first. Last one here is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So the second last one here always represents 2, which means 2 is our increment. 2 is our increment. Once you get your increment, you get your new subnet mask, which is 255, 255, 254.0, and you get where is your increment. It's on the third octet. What follows next is very interesting. What follows next is very, very interesting. So I'm going to uh, just take this down. And I bring my address here. So I'm having 150.5.0.0. Wonderful. So my increment this time around is 2. And two is on which octet? 
two is actually found on the two is found on the third octet, which means I'm going to add my two on the third octet here. So I'll have one fifty dot five. Then add two to the third octet. Zero plus two is two. Put zero. Okay. So the next one I'll have uh uh, I can just copy and paste very fast to make work easier for us. Okay, so this I add two again to two, I get four. I add two to two, I get six here. I get eight. And I get here ten. Let's leave it at but they. These addresses, they don't need to go up to up to 100. So long as you have known your sequence, that's enough. We don't have to do up to 100 since they need 100 networks. No, we can just do like about four or five. That will be sufficient. So now the. The. The, the assignment now is to find the network range here. And this is where I need you to be very, very keen now and very attentive. Eh? Now, we know that only the third octet is changing. Okay. The first and second octet is remained the same. And that means that the third octet has to be interfered with even in the range. So look at this. On the second network, the third octet. Sorry, the first network, the third octet is zero. OK. <laughs> the third octet is zero. On the second network, the third octet is two. So if the this third octet of the second net, network is beginning at two, it means the previous network ended at one. <laughs> OK, and now. We know that every octet. Starts from zero, uh, one, one, two, three, four, all the way to two, two fifty four, comma, two fifty five. Okay. After when we reach two fifty five, there is no two fifty six. Again, it starts from zero, uh huh, one, two. Three all the way. I hope that is clear enough. Which means after zero, we always have a one. After one, we have a two. After two, we have a three all the way. After 254, we have 255. After 255, we don't have 256. We start again from Z from zero. Which means the number that comes after 255 is zero. After zero is one, two, like that, like that. Which therefore means that the number that comes before zero is what? Is 255. So before one is zero. Before zero is 255. Before 255 is 254. Before 254 is 253. Before four is three. Before three is two. Before two is one. Before one is zero. Before zero is 255. Now, here is my question, guys. Here is my equation. You know that um, the first two octets are not changing. So my question is this. If the we have already said that the second octet starts with two, this one ended at one. If the fourth octet of the second network is starting with zero, <laughs> this one ended at what number? Which number comes before zero? 255. Very, very good. Very good. So if this one is beginning at zero, which is the first one, it means this one ended at the last one, which is 255. Wonderful. This one is beginning, the third network is beginning with four. Here it means it began, it ended with three. And this is beginning with zero. It means this one ended at 255. We do the same thing here. 
This one is uh, beginning at, uh, uh, this one ended at six. So this is going to be five. And this is ending, beginning at zero. This is going to be 255. You will never find this method in any academy. <laughs> any academy, you'll never, you, if you have attended any classes, even in Kenya here, in our academies in different universities, you'll never find this method anywhere. So this method is patented to me, and no one will teach you like that. The other, you'll just find, you know, people just brush through and you might not get so much. So please keep this method to your heart and teach it even at workplace when you go to work. So uh, let's see this. Uh -huh. Just filling in here. This is beginning at eight. As this is going to be seven. This is zero. So this is going to be two, five, five. All right. And the same thing, I'm going to put this here. This is, uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is 10. Obviously, this is a nine here, dot two, five, five. All right, so that's what's going to be two, five, five. So this is what's going to happen. So look at this, look at very ambiguous stuff here. So 150.5.0.0 is the network address. OK, the first usable address is the 150.5.0.1. The second usable is 150.5.0.2. Which means the broadcast address will be 150.5.1.255. That's the broadcast. The last usable is 150.5.1.254. Now, don't you think we will at some point we were having 150.5.1.0? which is a usable address in this case, okay? Because this one will start at one, go two, three, four, five, up to 255. When this is full, when you add one to 255, you, you're gonna add, you're gonna write zero here and you put one to the next one to be a one now. So there's a time when this part here was 1.0, which is a usable address, 1.2. 1 to 3, 4, 5, up to 1 to 255. So 1 to 255 here is actually a broadcast address. 0 to 255 is usable address here. Very, very important. So 2.0, network address. 2.1, first usable. 2.2, second usable. 3.255, broadcast. 3.254, last usable. So on and so forth. Very important. Now. Someone can ask, how many addresses do you have in each and every network? Each range has how many addresses? Very simple. Count how many zeros after we had reserved. Actually, had we have borrowed, actually. After we had borrowed, how many zeros were remaining? Eight here and one here. Those were nine. Two to power nine is 512. 512 minus two is 510. Okay? So each of these networks, each of these ranges have 510 usable addresses. Each of them, 510 usable addresses. All right. So that is interesting. Let's see another, another network. We have now class A. We have class A here. We have class A. I think today we'll end up, uh, I think, 8 o'clock uh, today. So please be prepared for that. Just start me so that we can finish up this. Now, class A, which has subnet mask of slash eight, 255.0.0.0. We need what? We need 500 hosts per network. 500 hosts per network. The network address we are given is 10.0.0.0. As usual, 500 networks. How many bits are those? We go up to 512, which is 2 to power 9. Okay? Which means. 500 is going to be between 256 and 512. 256 and 512. And you are going to ignore 250 uh, fees. So text 512, which is 2 to power 9. And that gives us 9 bits. Okay. After that, we now go and take our subnet mask, which was slash 8. Yeah. Which is. 255.0.0.0, .0 .0 .0, which is eight ones on the first octet, 
eight zeros, eight zeros, and eight zeros on the second, third, and fourth octet, respectively. All right. Then we're gonna reserve because we are talking about hosts here. We reserve. So to reserve, we are going to reserve our nine bits. And we said reserving you start from the end, from right to left. So we're gonna count nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So we reserve those nine zeros. No one touches them. Convert everything else to ones. Everything else should be converted to ones. And when you convert everything to ones, which means we have a new subnet mask, which will be 255, 255, the 254, because we have this one. So 128 plus 64 is 192, plus 32, 124, plus 16 to 40, plus 8 to 48, plus 4 to 52, plus 2 is 254. So 255 plus 255 plus 254 to 0, which is slash 23. All right. And we are going to have the last one bit here to be our increment, which is 2, which is found on the third octet. Found on the third octet. All right. The last thing to do is now use the increment, which is 2, to find our network ranges. So 10.0.0.0. We add 2 to the. We're going to add 2. Uh, to the third octet, 10 to 0 .0 .0, 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 so on and so forth. All right, all right. Then, like we did previously, the second network is beginning with 0, oh, sorry, the 2, here ended with 1, okay? This one is beginning with 0 here, this one ended at 2.55. Same thing. This is beginning at four. This ended with three. The two fifty five since zero is here. Six dot zero. This will be sorry. Six dot zero. This will be five dot two fifty five. So on and so forth. And the same thing as we did previously. Um, and that becomes that. Now. Uh, hey. Now, each of these networks. How many addresses are going to have? They're going to have. They're also going to have about 512 because 2 power 9. 2 power 9 is 512 minus 2 is 510. So each of these network ranges will be having 510 hosts in each and every range. OK. Now, suppose we were assigning each and every network the same number of addresses, 512, including the point to point which normally just needs just two. It means out of the 510, we are going to waste five or eight addresses. That is very dangerous, guys. And that is why we do have something here called VLSM, Variable Length Subnet Masking. In layman's language, VLSM is not going to give the same number of addresses to all the networks. We are not going to assign each network equal number of addresses. If you look at division of revenue in every government, for example, the government in Kenya uh, implements a county government system whereby Kenya has 47 counties, 47 county governments. Each county government doesn't have the same population. And so when the division of revenue is being done, there has to be a difference according to how many people are found in each county government. And so people with more counties with more people will be assigned more revenue as compared to counties with fewer people. And so in most cases in your exams, this method will never be called VLSM. They will always call it the most efficient addressing possible, the most efficient addressing possible. Or they will tell you, address this network, wasting the fewest amount of addresses, wasting 
the fewest amount of addresses, the fewest number of addresses. When you see that, just know they are talking about VLSM, variable length subnet masking, where you assign or you do subnetting, but do it according to how many users are in each network. Don't assign equal number of addresses. For example, I'm going to do just one example and everything else is going to be the same. Guys, everything else that we have submitted is going to be the same. The only difference is going to be only one difference. Only one difference is going to be available. Now, this is the thing. This network, we are told that subnet this network 192.168.1.0/24 to address this network and use the most efficient addressing possible. All right. So we have these networks here. Here we have 20 users here only. We have 60 users in this network and we have 20 users here. You can already guess how many users we have here. Only two and we have only two here and we have only two here. All right, so let's see what happens. The rule is one. Start with the highest number. That is the rule. So to so start with the highest number here, which is 60, this is what we are going to do. We are going to follow the same method. I will tell you where the difference is. So we are going to take 60, take it through our normal procedure. So 60 falls between 32 and 64. All right, 64 is between 32 and 64. 32 is less, so we're going to take 64. And 64 is 2 to power 6, 2 to power 6. Therefore means we are going to need how many bits? You're going to need 32 bits, sorry, 6 bits. For our 6 bits, our subnet mask was slash 24. All right, slash 24. So slash 24 means 8 bits on the first octet. 8 bits on the second octet and 8 bits on the third octet. I'm going to assume I'm not going to write uh, all of them. Because I'm so busy with the last octet where the host portion is, where there are 8 bits here. Okay. And so because of that, what I'm going to do is that since we are talking about hosts, users are actually hosts. So I'm going to reserve 6 bits. So I'm going to 1, 2, Three, four, five, six. I'm going to reserve these six bits and change everything else to one. So which means my last octet will have two ones. The second, the third octet will have eight ones. The second eight ones and the four, the first eight ones. And that's why our new subnet mask will be two five five to two five five to two five five dot one twenty eight plus sixty four, which is going to be one ninety. 192. All right. Look at this. The last one bit here is actually representing 64, and that is our octet. That's our actually our magic number. That is our magic number or the increment. And it is on the fourth octet. All right. So I'm just going to add 64 on the first octet. 0 plus 64 is 64. Then it means if the second network will be beginning with 64, 192.68.264, it means the range for the first one will be 63. You see that? So the first range is going to be 63. What is the difference between what I'm doing and what I did previously? Here, we add the increment to only once. Once we add 64 and we get the range for the first one, which is 63, and its new subnet mask is actually 255 to 255 to 255 plus 192, which is the same as slash what? Slash 26. Okay. So the network address for this guy will be 192 to 168 to 200, all the way to dot 63 here. And it is slash 26. I am done with this guy here. So that the first user will be 1.1 and the last user will be 1.62. The last use will be 1.62 here, which means I have a total of 62 addresses here. I'm only going to have two, two being wasted. 
only two are wasted here and not a lot. Two is enough for emergency. Maybe two employees are, 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 are recruited and we can give them the two computers. When we are done with that, we go back to the drawing board. We now pick 20. We have already done with 60. We pick 20. Remember, our second network is ending at 64 here. And what we will do, we'll take 20. And take 20, we ask ourselves, 20 is how many bits? 20 falls between 16 and 32. 16 is less than 20. So we take 32, which is going to be what? How many bits? It's going to be 5 bits, which is 2 to the power 5 of 32. OK, so 5 bits, 5 bits. And since we get 5 bits here, we're going to reserve 5 bits. So to reserve 5 bits, we take count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We reserve those 5 bits since we are talking about users. The rest will be 1s. So 5 bits of zeros and 3 ones, and the other uh, third, second, and first octet will be all be ones. So we'll have 255, the 255, the 255. That what? 128 plus 64 plus 32. That is 224. And that is going to be 24 plus 3, which is slash 27. And that's going to be the 224, the 224 here. What's our increment? 32, 128, 64, 32. The last one bit here is 32. So we take 32, we add to 64, we get 96. We get 96 here, all right? And if this is beginning at 96, it means this one ended at 94, 95. This one ended at 95. We stop there. We go back to the drawing board after adding the increment. The next one is also 20 which is going, we are going to treat it as this one, all right? So to treat it as this one, it means we are going to have, uh, yeah. we are going to have what? We're going to have uh, also 32. We add 32 to 96, we get what? We get 128. We add it, it is going to be the same one on the fourth octet. So 96 plus 32, we get 128. So for 128, it means th this next range is going to be 127. So these two networks are the ones for 2020. And we have ended at 128. The next network, of course, is going to be for two, another two, and another two. Now, this is where there's a problem, guys. Now, we two, where when you need to create two, <laughs> two host addresses. How many bits do we need? If we take two here, and you know two is two to power one, it means our bit is going to be one. If we take that one bit, we cannot use it. Do you know why we cannot use it? We cannot use it because if you put that our one bit on our formula of two power n, minus two, two power n minus two, where n one represents, we replace n with one. So two power n or two power one now is two minus two is zero. So this one is going to give us zero networks because we're going to take the one bit there, replace it with n on the formula for two power n minus two, and it's going to be two power one, which is two minus two is zero. So anytime you're given an exact number, of two bits of two hosts, please always take the next one, which is going to be four, which is two to power two. So we take that two bits there. It means we are going to require two bits to create two host devices. We're going to require two bits. So we reserve the two bits here. When you reserve the first two zeros here, then change everything to ones. Our increment is going to be four. Four is our increment. And our new subnet must be the slash 30, which is going 8 bits on the first octet, 8 bits, 1 bit on the second octet, and 8 bits on the third octet. And we are going to have 6 bits after reserving 2, 6 bits on the fourth octet. So 6 plus 24 is actually 30. 30, which is 255 
the 255, the 255, the 252, the 252 at the end. All right. So what we are going to do, we are going to, um, uh, our increment is four. And so we are going to add four to 128, which was the previous network. 128 plus four is 132. If the next network is ending at 132, the previous one ended at 131. Because we need how many? Three of them, three point to point. We'll add four in 132 again, we get 136. And don't forget, we have 196.1.136 here. So 132 plus 4, you get 136. If this is beginning at 136, this one ended at 135. Then we add the last one, 4, you get 140. If this is beginning with 140, this one ended at 139. Look at this. There's some magic here. In this 128 to 131, Dot 128 is the network address. Dot 129 is the first usable. 1 dot 130 is the second usable. So dot 129, first usable. Dot 130, second usable. There's no third usable. Why? Because 131 is the broadcast address. The same thing here. 132, network address. 133, first usable. 133 is first usable, 134 is second usable, and 135, this is 132. So 135 is our broadcast. So between 132 and 135, we have 133 and 134. Those ones are our only two addresses, exactly two, one for one end, one for the other end. This side is 129, this is 130, okay? For the last one, we have 136 to 139, where 136 is the network address, 137, first usable, 138, second usable, 139 is the broadcast address. So here we are not wasting any, we use exactly those addresses, okay? And we are done, and we can now assign our addresses everywhere here, the way we would like them to be, all right? And so, um, hmm. I will actually uh, do it like this so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. I will just let me make it, let me become a very orderly human being here and put my addresses here. Okay. So the first one was 192.168.1.0. Okay. Okay. So uh, I copy this one here, put it here. So um, hmm. so the second one here will be, let me just, I want to put them much orderly so that you guys can see. Uh -huh. All right, there we go. So the first one was 1.0. Remember we added 64, This uh, the first one. Then we added 32 and we got a 96. Then we added, after 96, we had 128. We added 32 again, to get 128, sorry, 128. Then, Uh -huh. After 128, we had, uh -huh. we have 132. Then we had 136, 36, 36. Then we had, here is 140. All right. So, uh -huh. So to get our addresses here, to get our network range. Okay, to get our network ranges here, let me just make it quick enough so that you can make sense of what I'm doing here. 
All right, all right. So yeah, so this is 64. Obviously, this will be 63. Okay. Uh, this one is 96. This is going to be 95. This is going to be 127. This is going to be 132. No, 131. This is going to be 135. And this is going to be 139. Okay. So here, uh huh. So the first one was um hmm. The first one was let me check the subnet masks here. When you bought six bit, that's slash twenty six. Then slash uh twenty seven twenty seven. Okay. Okay. So the next one will actually be this. So this is slash uh, 26. This is the network for um, 60 users. This was slash 27. 20 users. 20 users. All right. Another slash 27 for the next uh, 20. Users. Then this was were all slash thirty two users slash thirty uh, two users and slash thirty. Like another two users. All right. Yeah. So the you can see that here. You can actually see it right here. So slash sixty will be right here. Okay. Slash sixty will be right here. They are from network one hundred sixty one to zero all the way to one hundred sixty three. For twenty users, the first twenty users here. This guy is here. From 1.64 to 95 is actually the second network. The third one, 1.96 here to 127 is there. 128 to 131. You can see 128 to 131 is this network here. 1.32 to 135. 132 to 135 is actually right here. And 1.36 to 1.39 here is actually this network here. And so we have done VLSM. We have assigned every network addresses according to how many it needs, not giving them the same number of addresses. Guys, this is what in what happens in the field. This is what happens in the field, and this is what you're gonna uh, be seeing and doing in the field. All right. Now that's the end of our subnetting. And in the exam, how do they bring the equations? The equations in the exam, in fact, are too simple. The current CCNA exam, of course, has practicals and theory. The theory part will contain questions in form of reverse engineering, right? But in the exam, in the practical exams, of course, you'll get the normal subnetting. So for your certification exam, you have the following scenarios. I'll just give you two and you see how easy it is to calculate the number of, calculate. in fact, it takes you two minutes to answer this question. This question is asking, which subnet mask will place all hosts on network B in the sub subnet with the least amount of wasted addresses VLSM. So we have network A, which has 66 hosts. Network B has 310 hosts. So what will place people in network B in the same subnet? Very simple. And I, I'm gonna need answers from you. You just need to take 300, 310, sorry. 310 is how many bits, guys? Someone to tell me. 310 is how many bits? Someone? 310, how many bits? Three ten is how many bits? Someone, someone, 300. 
310. It falls between which two numbers? Nine bits. Yes. Nine bits. Because it falls between 256 and 512. 256 is 2 to power 8. And then 512 is 2 to power 9. I want you guys. So it is 9 bits. So what are you going to do? What you're going to do, since it's 9 bits, you're going to reserve the 9 bits here. Very simple. We're going to reserve our 9 bits. And using that, we are going to actually come up with the, with the subnet mask. So what do I do? All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, 9 bits. So we have already reserved our 9 bits. They should be at the end. Which means to make this one 32 bits, I need the rest should be ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those ones are actually nine. Sorry, eight. Eight bits. We add another nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, another eight. Okay. Then uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And by reserving, we know that those that are reserved are always at the end. Fill the rest with ones. And there you have your subnet mask. Which subnet mask is this? This is 255. Okay. Dot 255. Okay. Dot. Dot what? This is 128 plus 64. This is 192 plus. Very good. 254. Good. Dot. Zero. So look at my choices here. Which number is 255, 255, 255.0? That is choice what? Choice B. And that's how you get your answer. Using the number here, 310. 310, you look how many bits, then you reserve them, then fill the rest with ones and change it to sub to 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 to, to decimal, and you get your answer there. Eh? Look at the last one here before I give you assignments. The last one you're told. A new subnet with 60 hosts has been added to the network. Which subnet address should this network use to provide enough usable addresses while wasting fewest addresses? Same thing. Eh? Same thing. We know that 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, Four, two, and one. We are talking about 60 host, which is the new network that has been introduced here. We know that 60 falls between 32 and 64. This is where it is. We can't take 32, so we take 64, which is 2 to power what? 64 is 2 to power 6, because this is 2 to power 7. This is 2 to power 6. This is 2 to power 5. This is 2 to power 4. This is 2 to power 3, 2 to power 2, 2 to power 1, and 2 to power 0. All right. So we're going to take 2 to power 6 for 64, So which means we need 6 bits. Now, since we need uh, 6 bits, we need here 6 bits. We're going to reserve the 6 bits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, everything else should be ones. You see that? Once you do that, then you're going to fill the remaining with ones here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And the first octet, if you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at that. Which subnet mask is this? This is eight, eight, eight. That is 24 plus 2, 26, which means our answer must have a slash 26. <laughs> our answer must have slash 26. Currently, we have choice B and choice D. Look at what is our increment here. Our increment here, this is 128 and this is 64. So we go with choice B, the increment. The network address will be 192.168.1.64 slash 26. And that's how we do it, guys. That's how we go to do that. 
So that's how they bring question in the exam. It barely takes you two minutes to figure out that. We need to do enough practice. So I have a question for you. I'll give you just a few questions here. Please, um, hmm. Please, uh, please, the following. Not down, not down. The first question, the first question that I'm going to give you is here. The first question, write down. I think um, the uh, class representative, you're going to uh, put it in the group as well. Uh, now, first question. Create, uh, create 1000 subnets create 1000 subnets create 1000 subnets using address using the address 10.0.0.0 slash 8 create a thousand subnets using network 10.0.0.0 slash 8 that is the first question the second question the second question create 300 subnets Create 300 subnets using create 300 subnets using the same network address 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Create 300 subnets using an address 10.0.0.0 slash 8. That is the second question. The third question. Then third question. Create 20,000 hosts. Create 20,000 hosts. The first two are subnets, which are networks. The third question is create 20,000 hosts each. Create 20,000 hosts each. You don't need to create the whole 20,000. Just get about four or five. Using the network of 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Network 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Those three questions, you'll find the same subnet for each and every range. Those ones you do them like the first method we learned. Then I'm going to give you the first one, the last question in this category. The last question in this category. The last question in this category. Subnet 172.16.0.0. Subnet 172.16.0.0 slash 23. Subnet 172.16.0.0 slash 23 network and create the following create the following number one create a network of 200 hosts network of 200 hosts 200 hosts number two 100 hosts 100 hosts number three 50 hosts number three is 50 hosts 50 host number four 25 hosts and if this is VLSM now so 200 150 25 10 and the last one is four point to point hosts four point to point hosts four point to point networks with two hosts each four to point four point to point networks which have two hosts each which have two hosts each so this one you just calculate and you get your answers and share them among yourself now i now need to give you a, a assignments uh, because tomorrow we'll be doing by the way tomorrow we'll be doing uh subnetting for ipv6 which is chapter 12 of now to get used to or to calculate uh, IPv4 subnet, I'm going to give you some packet trace activities where you subnet, then you configure those addresses the way I taught you yesterday. So note down inside your notes 11.5.5, 11.5.5, that's the first one. 11.5.5, that is the first one. The second one is 11.75, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5, 11.7.5,
Uh, third one is 11.9.3, 11.9.3, then 11.10.1, and 11.10.2, the blue one, 11.10.2, the blue one, now, those ones you do, and you configure them on the packet tracer, and you see if the marks are adding. That is a very, very important assignment. And I will send you some more assignments because I want you to be good, guys. If you have to be good at the workplace, I have got to grill you properly. Okay? I need to make sure that you go to... Remember, nothing comes easy, guys. Everything, you must sweat for it. So spend your nightless sleepless nights you know? spend your sleepless nights to work on these pts and make sure you're doing a good job i'll send you some more over email over the email i'll provide a few more packet traces um uh, tomorrow after ipv6 i'll send you a few more packet traces please do it like you'll never do it again do it like i did it and do it better than i because i need you guys to be better than me at this because this is now what you're going to do at the workplace. You're going to do subnetting. And this is a very important skill. And tomorrow I teach you for IPv6. Others, I think um, this marks uh, the end of our, our class. I don't know whether there's any questions here. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen. Uh, are there any questions that you guys might be having uh yeah so that um i can be able to answer them okay so any questions guys i've given you a lot of work there to do again i'll send the um you find the this you'll find it uh on your i'll send it on the recording i'll send it in your in your in your, in, your, in your group and you can find it and you can go over over it over and over again Please uh, support this channel. We just, you can, you know, like, you can share and subscribe to the channel. And, um, um, you know, hit that notification bell so that wherever I share, you know, you're able to get it. Otherwise, thank you very much for today. And I'll see you during the next class for IPv6.